Oh, what's going on, everybody? You guys got the Barkage of the Hidden Gains Village back again for another video. In uh, today's video, we are finally going to be discussing the difference between a wide planche and a Maltese. Now, this is a discussion that can actually get kind of toxic and one that I was just going to stay out of altogether. But honestly, it's kind of become a little bit of a problem in this community recently because there's a couple of athletes that have a ton of influence that are just not doing Maltese at all, saying they're doing Maltese, and they're spreading lots of misinformation about this skill. And people can do skills however they want. You know, I don't really care. But the problem is because they have such a big influence, they're spreading this misinformation to younger up-and-coming athletes that are following them. So now these guys aren't doing Maltese and everyone's just confused and the other problem is like some people like with a high level will try to correct these guys in a constructive way just nicely telling them that what they're doing isn't actually the skill they're saying they're doing and what happens they just get super defensive and then they block whoever tried to be nice about telling them what they were doing so I want to make this video just to really try my best to break everything down with this skill. Um, so if you guys have like a friend or something that asks about the difference between Maltese and wide planets, you can just show them this video and hopefully I can explain it, okay? So we're gonna start things off by reading the very long and complex <laughs> definition of Maltese from the uh, gymnastics code of points. So this is like the official definition of what a Maltese is. <laughs> All right, hold on. This I had to write it down because it's super long and I just can't remember this off the top of my head. So one second here. <coughs> Support scale ring height. <laughs> okay. That's all it says, which is a pretty vague definition. Now, I understand what you guys are probably thinking just right off the bat. Street workout is not gymnastics. They're two different sports. Well, yes, that's true. However, I do believe that if you are going to take a skill from another sport, you should at least try to be true to what it originally says. And I guess one thing could be like, with street workout, we don't have like an official like organization. Like for gymnastics, they have FIG, which runs basically everything, but in street workout, we have a couple different ones. There's Burning Gate, there's WC, whatever it's called, like something WCF or whatever, I don't even know. Um, but there's that one. Um, there's probably a couple others. I, I don't really compete, so I don't really know. Um, but it, one thing that could maybe happen is like these organizations that host competitions could like um, set up like their own standards for Maltese, but then again, that would be kind of confusing. So it's better just, I think, do our best to stay true to the original definition. Um, now, one thing that, what you guys noticed probably right away was, well, that definition said absolutely nothing about width. So where does this idea of width come from? Well, if you've ever tried to do a Maltese on rings, uh, you would know that it's actually a lot more natural if you're trying to hold yourself at ring height to have your arms at a 45 degree angle. If, you're, if your arms are on ring, like if you're on rings and your arms are like right close to your body like this, it's actually a lot harder than um, just a regular <clears throat> Maltese hold. That's like a dead planche on rings which I'm not even sure if anyone's really done. Um, and it's very similar also to like a supinated uh, grip dead planche on straight bar, which again, like nobody's ever done. So it's so naturally when you're trying to hold yourself on the rings at ring height, you're going to get your arms a little bit wider. So that's where the idea of width comes from because it's just normal. Okay. So before we really get into, before I really break this down, we're just going to go through all of the different forms, okay? <clears throat> so right now on screen, what you guys are seeing is a regular full planche, okay? What do we notice here? Of course, first thing that I'm seeing is I am well above the surface that I am planching on. Uh, shoulders are protracted, depressed. 
um, body straight line. Um, yeah, planche, I don't really think people really <laughs> want to question that, okay? Next thing you guys are seeing is the dead planche. Um, so one thing that is, of course, that you guys are probably seeing that is really interesting about the dead planche is um, I am actually at the level of the uh, surface. Um, shoulders are more elevated, um, and they are also not fully protracted. That is your dead planche. Now, now here, here's where it gets, starts to get a little confusing. Based on that first definition, wouldn't a dead planche technically be considered a Maltese? Um, I, the answer to that is really yes and no. So dead planche actually is something that is a street workout move. Like it's something that started in street workout, I'm pretty sure. So it's just dead planche. Um, because like I said, with street workout, we did add a little bit of the width element and, and I'll get to all that. It's kind of confusing. Okay. Just bear with me here, guys. All right. So dead planche is not a Maltese. It's just a dead planche. Um, at least in street workout, we do like to have some sort of width application, but, uh, um, by definition, technically dead planche is Maltese, but no one is going to refer to dead planche as Maltese and, uh, no one doing a dead planche is going to call it that. No one's going to recognize a dead planche as Maltese. So I think you guys understand dead planche is just simply a dead planche. Okay. All right. After dead planche, what you guys are now seeing is a wide grip planche. Okay. One thing, this is obviously very similar to the <clears throat> just regular grip planche shoulder width. Um, also well above the parallel bars, okay? Notice also that my shoulders are a lot higher than my wrists, okay? This is the key important thing when it comes to Maltese, at least the way that I always like to think about it. It is wider grip, so arms basically at like the 45 degree angle with, and you're low enough to the point where your wrists are at the same level as your shoulders, okay? So in this image here of the wide planche, shoulders are well above the wrists, I'm well above the bars, it is not a Maltese, okay? Next picture. This is what some would call a dead wide planche. Now, here's the thing. I personally do use the term dead wide, but at the same time, I do understand that dead wide is synonymous with Maltese. Dead wide and Maltese are the same thing. The only reason why I like to kind of say dead wide is because uh, people do need to recognize that a Maltese with more width is always going to be more aesthetic and it's always going to be harder than a dead wide, uh, more narrow Maltese. The other thing with malt with dead wide, like I was saying, is it is ugly. Usually, um, when you're seeing a dead wide planche, the scapulas are usually out of place, and you also kind of start to get sort of a uh, banana shape. Okay, usually you do start arching your back <clears throat> when you're doing it. So. Dead wide and Maltese, you probably should understand that, yes, they really are the same thing, but the wide version is much harder. So that's why I always will refer to a dead wide as a dead wide, just because it kind it's just kind of my way of denoting that, yeah, it's Maltese, but it's like Maltese on easy mode, if that makes sense. So that's kind of how I like to think about it. Um, and I only ever really do dead wide anymore if I'm doing like um, <clears throat> stuff like dead wide push-ups, dead wide push-up to press. Um, so yeah, um, pretty cool. But there are some people I know that do call like a straight arm uh, dead wide planche push-up. Some people will call it like Maltese push-up with straight arms. That's okay. It, that really is what it is. Um, but personally for me, I always like to just use the term dead wide to define that just because it is kind of a way of just saying like, again, Maltese on easy mode. Okay. All right. 
Now we get to the part where it's really confusing. And this is where a lot of the arguments start, okay? Now, now we get to wider than the first wide planche width and obviously wider than the dead wide width. Because what you guys noticed was the dead wide and the other wide planche, they, they were the same width. It was just the heights of the two planches that were different that made the dead wide a Maltese and that made the other wide planche just a planche, okay? All right, but let's say you take the bars even wider than that, okay? Here's the thing. Again, if... <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. If your shoulders are above your wrists, no matter how wide you have the bar set, you are doing a wide grip planche, okay? If your shoulders are level with your wrists, then you're doing a Maltese. Because The reason why I have to say this is because one of these popular athletes that is literally... <laughs> It's so funny, too, because everybody fights with him about this, and he just won't budge. Um, he, he is once said that you have to have five foot width, no ma at least five foot width, no matter what, for it to be Maltese. So he gets to define the skill now. Um, here's why you can't have a set number of width for something to be called a Maltese, because... <clears throat> Everybody has different arm lengths, so that makes no sense. Like, all right, let's say that I'm training with my friend Elias, who is way taller than me. His wingspan is also a lot longer. So let's say I go and I do my Maltese with what would be my max width, and I do it so I'm wide and I have my shoulders level with my wrists, and it's a nice-looking, good Maltese. I step off the bars, I don't move them, and now Elias goes and does the exact same width. Oh, what? He's way higher than I was because his arms are just longer, so it's a closer grip for him. So you can't have a freaking set measurement for width standard. That's so dumb. You have to, if, like, if you think about always trying to get your wrists and shoulders. This is something that anybody can do. Obviously, yeah, if you're taller, it's going to be harder. I think we've all established that skills are just harder if you're taller, which is why I want to give my hats off to like tall guys like Jordan Stanchev, who are one of the best in the world, who's like one of the best in the world at Maltese and is really tall. Okay. So it's insane. <clears throat> um, but yeah, guys, I think that really covers all I... Oh, wait, you know, there actually was just one more thing I did want to talk about. Um, so first of all, obviously, wide planche is not Maltese, and Maltese is not wide planche. Um, that's not to say that wide planche is not a hard skill, okay? Because <clears throat> it is. The problem is you just can't go calling wide planche Maltese. Like, doing over five reps of wide planche press is still very, very strong. And I don't want to like act like it isn't because it really is. Five reps of wide planche of wide planche press is freaking crazy. But it's just not Maltese press, so don't call it Maltese if you're doing it. Um <clears throat> yeah, I mean that would be like the same thing as calling like five reps of deep push-ups pelican, right? Five reps of deep planche push-ups is still crazy hard and impressive, but it's not five reps of Pelican, okay? The, a real Maltese press is one of the hardest skills in a street workout, straight up. I don't think anyone has ever done, I, I honestly don't think anyone's ever even done more than one. Like the world record is probably two. I think, yeah, I think Elias did once tell me that some guy has done like two Maltese presses. Um, but yeah. Extremely hard skill, um, Maltese press is. Um, but again, not to discount wide planche. And then the last thing that <clears throat> I can give you when it comes to really identifying like wide planche versus Maltese, the, the way I see it, like if you're watching a clip, you look at it and it, um, you can immediately tell 
that the shoulders are way above the wrist and they're in wide planche. But if you're looking at it and it's kind of hard to tell if the uh, wrists are above the shoulders, then did, I, then I say just give them the credit. It's it's Maltese. Their shoulders are probably low enough and uh, their body's also probably low enough, okay? Um, anyway, guys, I really hope that this video helped clear things up. I don't know, maybe just confuse you more. Uh, definitely feel free to comment below uh, what you guys thought of this video as well as some future things you'd like to see on the channel. Of course, hit me with a nice subscribe, no jutsu, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.